I'm uh, Richard Barr from Youngstown, Ohio, uh, from Northeastern Ohio Medical College. Uh, today I'd like to review the initial uh, findings that people have been getting uh, in using uh, ultrasound elastography in thyroid uh, evaluation. I'm sure you're all aware that thyroid nodules are extremely common, occurring in up to 68% of the general population. The vast majority of thyroid nodules are benign, either being colloid nodules, follicular adenomas, cysts, or thyroiditis. However, 5 to 15% are malignant, and there are four types of malignancy uh, that can occur within the thyroid gland. The vast majority of these, about 86%, are papillary carcinomas, uh, the majority of the remainder are follicular carcinomas with uh, medullary carcinomas for 2% and anaplastic carcinomas for 1%. Conventional B-mode ultrasound is the first procedure to help differentiate benign from malignant nodules. There are some ultrasound features that are associated with malignancy such as microcalcifications, hypoecogenicity, intranodular vascularity, irregular margins, and an absent halo sign. Although all of these are poor predictors of malignancy, in combination their specificity increases. After initial assessment with ultrasound, suspicious lesions uh, usually go uh, an FNA for diagnosis. Um, FNA provides useful results in approximately 65 to 75 percent of cases. 60 to 70 percent of aspirates prove to be benign. 5 percent are positive for papillary cancer and 5 to 15 percent remain inconclusive. The remaining 15 to 25 percent remain indeterminate or suspicious. Elastography is a new ultrasound technique that may be able to help distinguish benign from malignant in thyroid nodules. We know that in uh, breast lesions, elastography is extremely useful in characterization of breast masses. There are two types of elastography. One is strain, uh, which you may have heard as displacement or compression. And this is based on tissue deformation from an external or patient source. This is a qualitative uh, technique. Um, there is also a second type of elastography called shear wave. Um, in this, a, a push pulse or a low frequency, high energy pulse uh, results in shear wave propagation perpendicular to the shear wave that can be remeasured as a velocity. And this is a quantitative method. Um, and the quantitation is we actually measure the velocity of the uh, shear wave. And harder materials, uh, the shear wave travels faster. And softer materials, the shear wave travels slower. Both strain and shear wave elastography have been shown to improve characterization of thyroid masses. Uh, let's first talk about strain elastography. Most benign and malignant thyroid pathology is stiffer than normal thyroid. And in strain elastography, because this is a qualitative method and not a quantitative method, they both show up as black if you're using a black and white scale, or if you're using a color scale, whatever is hard. Um, so uh, just looking at the color is often difficult to determine if something is benign or malignant, as if you compare it to normal thyroid, both benign and malignant lesions are stiffer than normal thyroid. The size changes that we see in breast cancer do not occur in thyroid masses. And in my practice, I really rely on those size changes in the breast cases uh, to help me decide if something is benign or malignant. We therefore need a semi-quantitative method of determining the stiffness of thyroid nodules. Um, so what I'd like to do is review what's in the literature uh, for several methods that people have used for uh, a semi-quantitative method of using strain. Um, the first is uh, a pattern uh, classification, um, and this is um, a color scale, um, and we use a pattern one that displays the nodule as homogeneously green. Pattern two is a nodule that displays the nodule as predominantly green with a few blue areas. Uh, Pattern three is a nodule that displays predominantly blue with a few green areas. 
and pattern four is a nodule that displays in completely blue. I should mention that this color scale is that blue is hard and red is soft. A second method that has been proposed in the literature by Lechik was to use the strain ratio. And this is the ratio of the normal thyroid gland to the nodule. A strain ratio of greater than four was the strongest independent predictor of malignancy in their um, research article. They found a 96% specificity and an 86% sensitivity. Uh, one problem with this technique is the strain ratio is often difficult to obtain if an image uh, with the normal thyroid and the mass because there are so many nodules or the index nodule is so large it's very hard to get both the nodule and normal breast tissue in the same field of view. A third technique by Denji was the thyroid stiffness index. They used the ratio of the highest strain value near the carotid artery divided by the lowest nodule strain. They found that a stiffness index of 18 corresponded to a sensitivity of approximately 88% and a specificity of 77.5%. Uh, Bojanga has done a meta-analysis on the eight studies that have been um, in the literature. Um, this involves 639 nodules all required either an FNA or surgical pathology. Uh, there were two vendors that were used in these studies, a, most of them with the Hitachi system and one with the Siemens system. Um, of these, 381 of the 639 um, had gone to surgery, that's about 60%, and had uh, histopathological proof of the diagnosis. The mean sensitivities between the studies range from 88 to 96, with an average of 92%. The mean specificities range from 85 to 95% uh, with an average of 90%. 153 of the 639 nodules, that's 24%, were malignant. Um, and this table uh, shows you the findings. Um, the majority, as one would expect, were papillary cancers, accounting for 88%, and the false negative rate was uh, 7%. The folliculars, uh, there were nine, which accounted for 6% of the cancers with a false negative rate of uh, 44%. There were six medullary cancers with no false negatives. There were two adenocarcinoma metastases uh, with no false negatives for metastases. And there was one case of uh, lymphoma with no false negatives. You can see that there uh, were no uh, anaplastic cancers within any of these studies. Let's review the literature for shear wave imaging. Again, we use this push pulse to generate the shear waves that are perpendicular to the push pulse, and the shear wave speed, VS, is measured with conventional ultrasound. VS is proportional to the stiffness of the tissue. The harder the tissue, the faster the VS. One can measure VS in a small voxel as a point measurement, or can use a color map of the VS superimposed over the field of view to get a uh, wide field of view image of the shear wave velocities. Um, Sabag has published a paper looking at shear wave in 146 nodules obtained from 93 patients. Uh, 29 of the 146, or approximately 20%, were malignant. He found that the malignant lesions had a um, shear wave velocity expressed in kilopascals of 150 plus or minus 95. And it had a very wide range ranging from 30 to 356 kilopascals. The benign lesions had an average kilopascal value of 36 plus or minus 30 kilopascals. And they had a range of between zero kilopascals to 200 kilopascals. And the difference between the benign and malignant had a p-value of less than 0 0.001. However, as you can look at the range of values, there was a very high overlap between the shear wave velocities of the benign and malignant lesions. Based on their ROC curves, they proposed a cutoff value of 65 kilopascals, which gave a sensitivity of 85% 
and a specificity of 94%. So I'd like to show you some cases from our lab. This is a papillary cancer. Um, here it is on B-mode image. You can see a couple calcifications. Um, here we have our strain elastography, uh, which shows that um, this portion of the lesion is very hard um, and normal thyroid is soft. Another view of that showing, again, that the nodule is hard. Um, this is uh, shear wave imaging from a Siemens system and from a supersonic system. Um, and here you can see that we have uh, some higher velocities um, now giving it a meters per second with some areas as high as 6.5 meters per second. And on the um, kilopascal range, we have some areas of high signal surrounding the lesion. Um, this case is an unusual case of an encapsulated follicular variant of a papillary cancer. On the B-mode image, you can see that there's um, eggshell calcification surrounding the lesion. The lesion is slightly hypoechoic to normal thyroid. On strain imaging, we can see that the lesion is hard and there's actually a second hypoechoic lesion, again, that is also hard adjacent to the lesion. Um, and this eggshell lesion is the uh, papillary cancer. Um, this was a benign lesion. And again, this shows you the problem with strain imaging if you're just looking at the color maps that both the malignant and benign lesion have similar characteristics on strain. And unfortunately, in this case, I did not uh, obtain a um, strain ratio. Um, these are the lesions, again, on shear wave imaging, uh, and again, using uh, a semen system uh, plotted out in meters per second, shows that within the lesion, we've got a velocity of approximately uh, three meters per second, and on the uh, supersonic system, uh, we have a similar reading that's uh, converted to kilopascals um, is approximately uh, 40 kilopascals. So uh, based on uh, these numbers, we would have predicted that this was a benign lesion. Um, this is a papillary cancer. It has uh, very characteristic B-mode images with uh, being very heterogeneous and multiple uh, calcifications throughout the lesion. It's extremely vascular on color Doppler. And again, you can see here on our strain image, the lesion itself is hard and has some softer areas within it. Uh, but again, um, I did not do a strain ratio here. Um, it's very difficult with strain imaging to determine if something is benign or malignant. And again, on shear wave imaging, uh, we've got numbers of approximately uh, three meters per second again. And on uh, a um, supersonic system, we've got numbers that are approximately 22 kilopascals. Again, based on the information on the literature, we would have predicted these as benign. Um, this was a follicular lesion uh, based on our FNA and on resection. It turned out to be severe chronic thyroiditis and a benign follicular adenoma. Um, you can see the uh, lesion is... Uh, just minimally hypoechoic to normal thyroid, is slightly heterogeneous, um, is incredibly vascular on color Doppler. And again, using strain imaging, we can see that there is a softer component to this lesion and a harder component to this lesion. And on uh, shear wave imaging, uh, we get velocities that are approximately six meters per second, more suggestive of this being a malignant lesion than a benign lesion, uh, which it turned out to be. Um, a papillary cancer, uh, hypoechoic lesion, heterogeneous with some calcifications. Again, very hard on strain imaging. Um, on the cystic area of this lesion, you can see it's very soft uh, because it is fluid. But again, um, we feel like we have some difficulty in distinguishing based on strain alone without doing indexes um, if a lesion is benign or malignant. On shear wave imaging, we get velocities of approximately three meters per second, uh, suggesting that this uh, lesion is most likely benign. We have this area that has no color in it, and this is what happens uh, with fluids. Some simple fluids, shear waves do not propagate. So when you look at the images, they are coded as being black to show that there's no um, shear wave imaging. Um, I want to show you this case, uh, 
of a degenerating follicular adenoma because on B-mode imaging, it's very similar if we go back to this papillary cancer. Um, there is some blood flow mostly in the periphery, and on shear wave imaging, uh, in this case, we get values in the approximately uh, 30 kilopascals. So again, uh, both the follicular adenoma and the previous uh, papillary cancer actually have very similar elastography characteristics. And here they are, um, and another case with an adenomatous nodule uh, compared to a papillary cancer uh, using, uh, again, shear wave versus the B-mode. And you can see that the lesions are somewhat similar on B-mode, but have very similar um, elastography characteristics. In fact, the benign nodule has uh, higher velocities uh, within it than the uh, malignant nodule. I just want to bring up um, another interesting uh, form of elastography that is being evaluated at the Mayo Clinic. It's called vibroacoustography. Um, and this uh, system uh, is based on very low frequency vibrations. So that push pulse or radiation force of ultrasound is used to vibrate the object and a hydrophone is used to record sound emitted from the object. And it's actually the sound waves uh, that are used to produce the image. Uh, this is an example of a papillary thyroid cancer. Uh, you can see there are some calcifications uh, pointed out by the arrows, and the uh, image labeled B is the uh, VA image, uh, which is very heterogeneous. And here is a benign thyroid nodule, again showing uh, the um, vibroacoustic properties uh, which are different than the elastography. Um, this is still in very early stages, and I don't think we uh, completely know how to interpret the images, uh, but we are seeing differences between benign and malignant lesions, and um, we look forward to hopefully this technique developing um, because in our hands we're having difficulty with both strain and shear wave imaging in characterizing thyroid lesions and hoping that uh, this new technique may uh, add additional information. So to conclude that both strain and shear wave imaging provide additional information on thyroid lesion characterization, and uh, several methods have been used to determine the differences between benign and malignant, and have shown uh, sensitivities and specificities in the 80 to 90 percent range. Um, one of the problems here is all the studies have had been very small with small numbers of cancers. Um, in fact, I have not been able to find a study with an anaplastic cancer and the number of medullary cancers um, has been less than five. Um, and I think that it's um, very difficult at this point in time for us to make a clear conclusion as to what we should be doing with thyroid imaging. Um, in our hands at looking at several hundred uh, thyroid lesions, we really are struggling in determining um, how we should be using this to determine if things are benign and malignant. Um, I think one of the things that we think uh, is that we have to look at the elastography data in addition to BMO data and do a study where we have a, a large study that compares both the BMO characteristics and the elastography and the use of those together uh, may be able to provide us with some diagnostic information. And again, unfortunately, um, in breast, there seems to be very little overlap of the elastic properties between benign and malignant, making the technique of elastography extremely good. Unfortunately, it looks like in thyroids, there is a fair overlap between benign and malignant, uh, making it difficult uh, for us to use elastography um, at this point in time without uh, adding in other features. So again, we really believe we need a large multicenter trial that uses both conventional ultrasound and elastography, hopefully both strain and shear wave, to help clarify what is the appropriate use of elastography in thyroid disease. And again, we think that by using a combination uh, or scoring B-mode characteristics as well as elastography uh, features may provide us a, a better predictor of malignancy. So I hope that uh, this lecture gives you an overview of where we're at at this point in time with thyroid elastography. 
Um, we still need some work to do, and I think it's still worth evaluating these techniques, but again, they're not going to be as clear-cut as they are in breast, um, and um, hopefully the next lecture I give on this will have a clearer definition of how we should be using elastography in thyroid disease. Thank you.